So you've created an application that is a brilliant application, but there's some screens that are just running a little slow right now in Power Apps. Well, in this video, you're going to see how to create us a loader spinner to kind of give your users the perception that something's happening inside the application. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Over the past week, we've been building an application to handle our HR instances. Well, you may notice in the last video, there was a few screens that when SharePoint was a little sluggish, were, was, was giving their users the perception that nothing was happening. Now, you do have those you know, loading ants that are going, marching ants that are going across the top screen, but sometimes users need a little bit more punch that, to let them know that something is indeed happening and they miss those loading ants on top of the screen. So we're gonna show in this video two ways you can do that. One is where you have complete control of the environment and you decide when you wanna show the loading and not. And the other way is where uh, we do an automated method. So we'll show you both ways. Uh, so, so let's uh, look at our application again. So back in our application that we were looking at uh, over the past week here, we've got a, uh, a basic application that's, that's doing our HR shout outs. And we had a few screens in our last video that were really sluggish. So we wanna fix that, that setting. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is, the first setting is I'm gonna select my entire screen Let's do this uh, home opener screen here. And you'll notice there's a property in the advanced tab or also in the drop down box in the top left, and it's called loading spinner. And when I select inside this, you'll see loading spinner.none is selected. You'll also again find it in the advanced setting as well. So I'm gonna set this in my case to data, which is the slowdown in my case. This is making my, my environment a little more sluggish. So by setting this loader, load, loading spinner to data, We'll be able to kind of, uh, whenever it's opening a screen up initially and, it, and, the, and the data's kind of coming in originally, it's gonna give us a little loading spinner to kind of, kind of see that. Uh, I'm gonna do that on both of my screens and then I'm gonna show you what this looks like and then I'll show it to you again on uh, uh, a different method also. So back over here again, loading spinner. And let me pop that in again, loading spinner.data. Uh, now you'll notice there's actually two, um, there's two options here, loading spinner and loading spinner color. So you do have control of what that looks like also. So let me go back here and let's hit the play and see what this looks like. So as I play this and I hit send shout, it, it, watch it very, very quickly here because it goes very quickly. Ready? One, two, three, here it goes. And there's our spinner and then we're off to the races. Now I was doing that while I was caching from this data here. You can also set a loading spinner to happen more on the control side as well. Like if you have, if you have some slow controls like maybe Power BI or something like that that take a lot of load in, then you could put a loading spinner on that side as well. And as I send this again, we'll get the, we'll get the spinner. Now here, notice this issue here. All right, we, got, we had the little loading spinner there, but as it was sending that row to SharePoint, let me kind of recreate this one more time here. As I pick on Adrian here, never stop teaching, pick on a few things here. Now watch this, okay, ready? I'm gonna hit send, this is where it's writing the SharePoint, and we've got uh, one, two, three, about three or four seconds there of it loading. That's where I'm finding my users that are using this application are finding the biggest issues. So. Where I've showed you now how to do a generic loading spinner, we now want to go ahead and set it manually as well and control the whole end user experience. So that's our next step. So you've seen one, now I'm going to show you the other one where you get complete control. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to import an image, a loading spinner of our own image. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use loading.io. It's a website that's out there. It's a free website. It has some that are pay images and there are some that are uh, open source images. And then I'm gonna basically hide that image and show that image upon different screens happening. So let's, let's start by the website here. Again, I'm going to loading.io. What you do is, this is, this is brutal on, on, uh, on the eyes here, but you're gonna see that uh, some of them are $1.99, $2, whatever, and you'll see some open, some uh, uh, end user ones here also. So as I pick on this one, like this one here for, here, for example, okay? And this is, uh, this is a little bit brutal on my machine as well, as you can see. Uh, having all these little icons. Now here's here's the icon that we're about to download. Now I'm not actually gonna download it right now, but here's, here is it in action right here. Now we can now change the color to be whatever color scheme we want. So I'll use this guy, how about like right here, for example. So you can see, oh, well, actually that's same, the same icon. I, that's the frozen L Elsa screen looks like. We can change the speed of it. You can change the size of it. Everything you have complete control over. And when it's all done, you hit the, hit the uh, download button as a GIF and then you can now import this in the Power BI. So there's tons and tons, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different icons inside of here you can use. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. 
uh, let's go out of here and I've, I've got a little Microsoft looking one here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to file and go into my media section here. I'm going to import an image that I've already downloaded from loading.io. I'll call this just cube. There it is. Keep a mental note on that name there, cube 1.1, one, so it's one second uh, of, of, and 200 pixels here. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this is a really small file here, about 76K. You get about 200 megs of media storage. You gotta be very, very selective about how you do that. Uh, in my case, uh, this is a tiny, tiny little file that we're gonna use here. So again, our goal here is to have complete control over it. So let's go to that second screen, and the send shout out screen. And let's implement it inside of here instead. And the goal I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, to communicate to the user something is happening when I hit that send shout outs button here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert that image, that, that media gallery. So here is our media image. Okay, there's our sample image right here. We'll put it, we'll put it like right in the white area here so you can kind of see something is happening after you click while your eyes are on that send shout out button. Uh, because I've imported the image, and I don't need, won't need a URL, I just need the word cube, and hopefully you'll find it. There it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a variable in place to let, my, to let my application know that I don't want to show this image by default, of course. So I'll make this a little bit bigger, maybe about that big. Looks, looks decent here. And what I'm going to do is whenever this, this, this uh, screen first opens up, so that's going to be the on visible action. So again, I'm going to have my screen selected. And on visible, I'm going to add one more variable here. You see, I have, I have two variables already. Let's go ahead and add one more variable here. And I'll just say um, var loading. And its default state will be false. Okay, perfect. Now, the, the visibility of this now, if I go to visibility here, we could do an if statement, but an if statement's not really required in this case, is it? So if I go to on visible, so basically we want the state of that variable. So if it's set to false, hide it. So if I go to var, var loading, excuse me, var loading, now it disappears. So I need some kind of event. So whenever the screen first opens up, this, that, 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 that is now hidden. But I need some kind of event now that's going to say that whenever this, 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 uh, this process is happening, then go ahead and show it at that point. So that event in my case is this, this uh, submit form event right here. So in my case, you, sit, you, hit, you click the button. I'm then going to go ahead and set the variable, update context. And my variable is going to be, oh, let me kind of put a comma there so we can kind of get out of that. There we go. I'm going to go var loading. Whoop. I got, my cursor went out of the way, var loading. So I'm setting the var loading now to true. Close our squirrely bracket. There we go. Okay, and it doesn't seem to be happy with that, does it? And that's because it looks like it has got things slightly out of order. Oh, oh, I have a comma instead of a semicolon. That's a uh, duh. All right, there we go. And then I'm gonna tell it to go ahead and navigate back to the, the previous screen at that point. So we have three events that are going to happen. It's going to go ahead and show the icon, submit the form, and then go back to the previous screen. Okay. So now let's go back and let's go to the previous screen here. So keep in mind, as I do this, just because I kick off this button, the on visible event's not gonna kick off until I actually come out of the screen to come back in. So that's one of the gotchas that I had to find out the old fashioned way through, uh, through sheer uh, will here. I'll send my, send my shout out. I'm gonna select a random employee here. To give a little love to here, to be humble. Okay, and now we should see our send shout out right here as you can see, SharePoint's being very slow right now. Our dancing ants are, are in action right now. And now it's actually loading these two galleries right here is why we saw that, uh, that other spinner there. So there's two ways of doing this, as you see. So one was a really refined way where you just you control the exact location, the exact icon that's going to be shown. Uh, that is the, the variable to hide it, turn it on and off. The other way is the, the native way in Power Apps where you can control the color and that's about it. So what's happening is as it's loading up all the galleries, that spinner icon is going while the data is all coming down, and as soon as it's going, it disappears. But in the event of once everything's all up, you don't have a whole lot of control over it. And that's where the other method comes in where you can show it visible and turn it on and off. 
those are two options for you for, for loading spinners. I hope that helps you today. Keep in mind, this is part of our Power Apps class. If, you, if you're curious, you can find that link down below. And we can also build the Power Apps for you as well at pragmaticworks.com in case you're curious as well. Uh, if any questions, please do submit those down below in the comment section. And we want to also find out what applications you want us to build as well for our upcoming video. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.